Grace and joy to you. High five somebody in your area and welcome them to chapel today. This is an incredible Friday. We've got some connectors here from the class of 2027. Welcome, family. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. There are some choir members from Los Angeles and the country of Norwegian is here today. Let's praise God for them. <laughs> Koinonia House National Ministries is with us. Let's praise God for them. How about the quintet this morning, ladies and gentlemen? Wow. What an incredible day. Hold on to your seat. From the class of 1991, a gift in the kingdom of God is with us. Pastor Manny Mill is a graduate of Wheaton College, two-time graduate. He's the executive leader of Koinonia National House Ministries. God saved him in prison, and he's been on fire going all over the world, telling the world about a risen Savior. And he's coming to chapel to bring it this morning. Tell somebody he's going to bring it. He's going to bring it. Hear the word of the Lord, Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God, and it is he who has made us. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So enter into his gates, Wheaton, with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Somebody say, why, chaplain? Why? Because the Lord is good. Amen. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's stay standing now as we hear the call to prayer through the wonderful hymn, Come Sunday. So
of the loved one next to you, our Father and our God, we've come to pray now, and we need you. Would you breathe on this house this morning? Somebody's got a broken heart, and they need to have it healed. Somebody's discouraged today, and they need their minds renewed. Somebody's just tired, and need their bodies revived. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven. Feed us until we want no more, and we'll give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. Somebody shout a good amen. amen. fun. There's a little bit of clapping involved, which I think most of us know how to do. So when we clap, you guys clap with us. The refrain we're going to sing in Spanish, and then the verses we're going to sing in English. So let's do this.
remain standing as we open God's word to Acts 9. There will be moments where we read together, which will be indicated on the slides behind me. Acts 9, 1 to 22, ESV. But Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him. And falling to the ground, he heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice but seeing no one. Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were opened, he saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he answered, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Rise and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he is praying, and he has seen a vision, in a vision, a man named Ananias come in and lay hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, go for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered the house and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you came has sent me so that you may regain yourself and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately, something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized. And taking food, he was strengthened. For some days, he was with the disciples at Damascus. And immediately, he proclaimed Jesus in the synagogues, saying, He, he is, is the, the Son, Son of, God. of God. And all who heard him were amazed and said, Is not this the man who made havoc in Jerusalem of those who called upon this name? And has he not come here for this purpose, to bring them bound before the chief priests? But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Hallelujah! Can you say hallelujah with me? 
listen, you heard that I came to school here, Wheaton College. And I tell people that before I came to Wheaton, I went to Yale. People say, man, you went to, no, I went to jail. <laughs> <laughs> listen, in life, in life, everything that we really know is not taught, is caught, is taught. So I need you to put your glove with you today because I'm going to throw you many balls today. Can you catch? Let me see if you can catch. <laughs> Amen. Come on now. Let me see if you can catch. Hey! That guy, that guy can. Let me see if you can catch. Oh! Amen. We have good A. Hey, baseball season just started. Amen. Now let us consecrate ourselves now before God, our Holy Father, confessing to him through Jesus Christ that we are sinners in desperate need of his forgiveness and mercy. Let us ask him to make us be partakers of his radical grace to awaken and revive us so that through the Holy Spirit we may be like Christ. Hallelujah. Now let us pray. Father, we confess we fall short of your holy standards, but we desire to be Jesus' permanent bound servants, dressed in his humility. Make us like Saul, who became the apostle Paul when confronted by Christ. May we, may we participate in your will and become worthy of carrying the banner of the gospel. I pray in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. I'm humble. I mean that. I am humble to be here before you in your presence this morning. Thank you, Dr. Wilson. Thank you, Dr. Riken. Thank you, Dr. Chase, Dr. Geezer. Thank you, my dear friend, uh, Dr. Tony Payne. Where is he at? He's over there. Uh, Thank you for all of you who are here this morning in attendance for allowing me this honor and this privilege to preach the Word of God. Let me tell you why I'm here this morning. I'm here to remind us, because we forget, that our sovereign God is still delights in taking rebellious sinners and turning them into his instruments to be used to proclaim his glory to the end of the world. That's why I'm here this morning. Anyone, anyone is a candidate to receive the same free, transformative, and secure grace so received through the resurrected Christ as we just heard read from Acts chapter 9, which is the all-reliable, the all-delicious, the Uh all-sufficient Word of God. Let's remind ourselves of the setting of this event. It is the early days of the church, Uh comprised mostly of Jewish people who believe that Jesus of Nazareth is the long-awaiting Messiah. Stephen and six other men who were chosen to oversee the task of distributing food to the Greek-speaking widows of the church, the deacons. He not only carries out that task, Stephen, but being full of faith in Christ, faith is a gift of God the Father. Feel of that faith and the Holy Spirit, he also performs great miracles. Opposition, bloody war arose. Our religious leaders stood up the crowd to falsely accuse them, saying Stephen taught against Moses, against God, against the temple and the Torah. He is arrested, arrested, brought before the religious Supreme Court and gives a masterful defense, quoting Moses and the prophets rightly accusing the religious leaders of ignoring these very things. Of course, they didn't like that. They didn't like that. Their reaction is so violent 
they take Stephen outside and they stone him to death. To death! Innocent man. And at the end of Acts chapter 7, they detail Dr. Luke. Records in verse 58, they began to stone him. And the witnesses laid down their coats, their coats, at the feet of a young man named Saul. Yes, sir. This is the first encounter we saw in the scriptures. And Dr. Luke says, starting that very day of Stephen stoning, an intense persecution. Yeah. It, and that's coming, by the way. Intense persecution began and Saul began ravaging the church. Entering house after house, dragging off men and even women, putting them in prison. Yes, Saul was not a safe man for the early church. No, he was not. In his own words, as he would later testify before King Agrippa, he said, Indeed, I myself thought I must do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. This I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the things I locked up, I shut up yeah. in prison, yeah. having received authority, the wrong authority, yeah. from the chief priest. And when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. What an indictment. Saul was responsible for the killing of many early Christians. He was a very angry man on a mission. Yes, sir. He was a former serial killer. But God, hallelujah, God. but God, God. say it with me, but God. God. But God had all the plans. It's all about the who, who knows the how. Yes. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Our sovereign triune God broke into Saul's life in a surprising way. God wants to surprise you this morning, and he will. I guarantee that. Around noontime, the brightest part of the day, a very bright light suddenly, without Saul's permission. God does not need your permission to invade you. To invade you. Suddenly, flash from heaven, and the resurrected Jesus himself spoke, saying, So, so, why are you persecuting me? Yes, sir. How was it that Saul was persecuting Jesus? By persecuting his people. Yeah. Yeah. As one commentator put it, this demonstrates how closely Jesus identifies with his people. Jesus is the head of the body. When a part of the body is pain, the head responds. This is the sweet unity for which Jesus prayed in his high priestly prayer recorded in John 17, that we may be one with the Father. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So rage may have been directed against individuals, and it was, in this new group called The Way. But here we learn who truly was the object of his rage, Jesus himself. Yes. Saul thought he was being zealous for God. Listen now, this is the main core of my message. Saul thought he was being zealous for God, yet he was serving a God of his own making in his own way. That is called blasphemy. Blasphemy, according to Scripture. The one who was trying to get others to blaspheme was guilty of himself. That's called hypocrisy. If you read my second book that I wrote on prayer, the first chapter, I call myself a hypocrite. Just get it and read it for yourself. Like so, many today think it is their duty to rally support for the cause or for the movement. They think they are being zealous for what is right 
when in fact they are directly opposing Christ himself. While most Christians do not have such a dramatic radical conversion story at all, all true believers, all true believers must come to the same understanding as all that we are sinners. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who sin can only be washed away by calling on the name of Jesus. Yeah. That all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. That we cannot worship God in ways of our own choosing. Question, Amen. do you understand that? Yeah. One more time. Do you, do you understand that? A skeptic may wonder, why did God allow Saul to persecute and imprison people? That's a good question, isn't it? Why did God allow Stephen and others to be killed? That's another good question. Those are questions for another time. They only gave me 20 minutes. And ultimately left to our sovereign God. But today it is for us to learn from what is clearly taught here about our great God that he can and he will break into people's lives whatever way he chooses and in whatever time he chooses in order to accomplish his good and perfect will. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what he's talking about. God himself told Ananias, that Saul was his chosen instrument to carry his name to the nations. There's much in this story to which I relate. A little bit about my background, just to set the stage. I was born in Cuba, Cubano, and raised there until age 14 and a half. When my family fled to Spain at that age, after two years in a refugee community, we arrived in America, a great country, by the way. Even after coming to the U.S., my mother continued to practice witchcraft, santeria, brujeria, spiritism. She's heavily entangled. She was heavily entangled that witchcraft within the Cuban Catholic Church. She was a medium to demons and included me in her daily rituals. She thought, she was convinced she was worshiping and serving God when in fact she was serving the devil himself. But God, God. in his mercy, hallelujah, led her to a church yes, where on the very first night she attended, she heard the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ and experienced a radical redemption. My first book is titled Radical Redemption. That very, that very evening, yeah, praise God for that. That very evening, she cleansed our entire house. She hid all the corners. Yeah. All the corners, getting rid of all the idols, the coconuts, uh -huh. the Cuban cigars, don't uh -huh. smoke Cuban cigars, Cuban cigars, handkerchiefs, uh -huh. and alcoholic drinks used in her former ways of worshiping. Question, are there things you need to get rid of or from in your life? Christos, sage, astrology items, inappropriate books or movies. My mom, my mom became fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ, praying radically with unashamed audacity for my salvation. From what? From the justifiable wrath of God. She prayed. She prayed, Father, do whatever it takes to save my son Manolito from the slavery, from his slavery and get of sin. She prayed, Father, if you don't, he won't. Although the early church was very afraid of Saul, I cannot help it as I read the text, but think someone who truly understood the transforming power of God, the Father was praying for soul salvation. Yes, sir. Yes, they were afraid of, of him. Yes, they were. But someone probably had the audacity, the audacity to believe, yeah. to also pray for God's mercy upon soul. Question, do you have a soul 
in your life for whom you should be praying now. Maybe after the service, we're going to pray together for that person. Not to pray for the impossible is to offend God. Mm, my God. Second question, or do you see yourself in soul at all? Inside of you, desperately zealous. You, you, are, you are zealous for what you think is right but may actually be directly opposed to Christ. The truth is, though the more my mother prayed for me, the worse I got. That's the truth. I had achieved the American dream. Nice cars, home, beautiful wife, child, and even some hair. <laughs> but I was dead in my sins. Yes, sir. But I was dead in my sins. On my way to hell, I was on my way to hell. Everything I did was with me in my mind. I believe, yes, I believe in the human trinity, me, myself, and I. My greed, my greed, and my pride led me to commit fraud, which then led me to my running from the FBI. And those guys want you. When I finally settled in Venezuela, I told my parents I was there to open a Cuban restaurant, which I did. The best Cuba in the country, actually. <laughs> Cuban food is good. Sometime later, the FBI visited my parents and told them the real reason, the truth, why I was in Venezuela. That I was running from the reality, from the reality of facing, yes, 55 years in prison for my many crimes I committed. Yes, sir. My parents called me from their home in New Jersey, and my mother first confronted me with my sin. Oh, yes, she did. Next, she shared the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, telling me that God the Father loves me and sent Jesus to become my substitute and savior by dying on the cross yes, to make payment for my sins with the shedding of his sinless blood. Yes, sir. She asked me to repent, like I'm gonna ask you in a few minutes. Yeah. She asked me to repent so I could experience life in Christ yes. and be reconciled with God my Father who, I, who used to be my enemy. And listen, 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 listen. In that same phone call, because I want you to know this, that God, the Father, wants to surprise you this morning. In that same phone call between New Jersey and Caracas, both my father and I became born from above Christians. My God. My God. Both of us. Hallelujah. On the 28th day of January, 1986, I was found, I was arrested, and I was confronted by the resurrected Christ. Yes. Knocked down from my own horse of pride, invaded by the grace of God the Father, and awakened to the radical redemption purchased by Jesus Christ, my Lord, my Savior, and yes, my older brother. Yes. I received that night the heart of Christ, who revived me to the power of the Holy Spirit and enter, and I enter a permanent relationship with God my Father with the hope. Yeah. This is hope with many of the prisons that we go into. Hope. Helping others pursue eternity, helping our people everywhere. Yeah. With the hope that Jesus Christ will become again in his glory for his bride, the church, yes. he purchased yes. and he rescued, hallelujah. Then my mother asked me, when, I, when are you going to come back to face the music of the FBI because they, they, they play good music. I told her, no way, Jose. <laughs> but she gave me my first scripture, Hebrew 13, 5. She said, Manolito, 
God the Father has promised to never leave you nor forsake you. That became my life verse, giving me the courage to return to the U.S. I didn't know it at the time, but it was like Ananias saying to Paul, why do you delay? Arise, arise, Manimeo, arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. Yes, sir. I threw myself on the mercy of God. And the judge, because I was guilty, I received what I did not deserve, that's called mercy. Yeah. I received what I didn't deserve, a sentence of three years to prison. My God. Like 95% of all inmates, my marriage did not survive incarceration, yeah. ending in divorce. I did not see my children for over five years, but I was strengthened yeah. daily by the truth of Hebrew 13, 5. I was chosen by my mentor, by my late mentor, the late John Paulson, yeah. who himself had a Damascus Road encounter with Christ during the crazy times of Mr. Nixon yeah. and the Watergate scandal, to participate in prison fellowships, Washington Discipleship Seminar. This former fugitive, me, was allowed to leave prison, God surprised me, for two weeks and traveled to Washington, D.C. One night there was a banquet at the Hilton in Washington. So from the prison Hilton to the Washington Hilton. <laughs> there was a banquet. <laughs> and guess who was the speaker? Billy Graham. A convict being with Billy Graham. By the providence of God, I was seated next to Dr. Kenneth T. Westner. Me, an inmate meeting Billy Graham, Chuck Colson and Ken Wesley all on the same evening. Yeah. Only, God. Only God. Dr. Wesley kindly asked me, I mean, next to me, what I was going to do after my release from prison. So I said, sir, I didn't know who he was. Sir, by faith, I'm going to Wheaton Bible College. He said, oh, I'm glad, but it is called Wheaton College. <laughs> To which I said, sir, I know what I'm talking about because I just, I just applied for the Cousin Scholarship at Wheaton Bible College. <laughs> and I'm going to study the Bible. We went back and forth a few times until he humbly said to me, Manny, I am the board chairman of Wheaton College. I have no place to hide. <laughs> I said, where do I hide? <laughs> but the grace of God, he surprised me, and I was released early, going from one jail to another jail, it's called Wheaton College. <laughs> the first thing they made me do at age 32 was passage. Known in my days as high road that was hell on earth. I never forget Dr. Chase said to me, Manny Mel, will you do it again? I said, sir, if we do it together, I do it with you again, Dr. Chase. Once again, God allowed this former fugitive to travel on parole. I participated in a six week program, Wheaton in the Holy Lands in Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. I was there. On the last day of my parole, I met my lover, the, the love of my life, my dear wife, Barbara. She's over there somewhere. Amen. She is, she is my human Holy Spirit, by the way. It has been a privilege for the last 32 plus years to serve in his kingdom through a ministry called Cononia House Ministries. We seek to build bridges and restore hope for all of those impacted by incarceration, over 90 million people in America. The most neglected ministry in America. Inmates and their families by proclaiming the gospel as they go from the jail gate 
to the prison gate and beyond into the church. Yeah. We, have seen, we have been sent to prisons and jails here in our state, all over the country, and all over the world. The same Jesus that not a former serial killer like Paul off his horse on the way to Damascus, who confronted me about my many things, including a sexual addiction, still at work redeeming hundreds, if not thousands, of souls in prisons, and yet there are many of them right there on that section. Right there. Yeah, right there. Yeah, right there. Around the globe. After 30 years after his divine encounter with Jesus, Saul, now known as Paul, wrote to his beloved son in the faith, Timothy. He says that he soon will be executed, so his words were filled with tenderness, with boldness, and with urgency. Say one more time, with urgency. He reminds Timothy to find the flame of God's gift he received, to remember the gift of the Holy Spirit who gives power, love, and self-discipline. He urged him not to be ashamed of the testimony of Jesus. Yes, it's been 37 years as my own Damascus Road encounter with Christ, and 34 years since I first sat in those very seats in Edmond Chapel. I feel right now, I mean, now, now inside, I'm, I'm now bowling. I sing the Holy Spirit right now. I am a biblicist, by the way. I, I, I am a biblicist. I feel like Paul, urgency right now. A sense of urgency for a permanent awakening, not just temporary. I'm talking about a permanent awakening. A urgency to exhort you, even professors and faculty, guests from Norway, I sought you now to be courageous by making Jesus you all in all, just as the Apostle Paul and I have done, no regrets. So, so let's keep it 100. Right. Let's keep it 100. <laughs> let's keep it 100. Let's commit to be all in, all in, all in, all in for Christ like the Apostle Paul was. He wrote, come on now. He wrote to Timothy. Come on, come on, come on. Thank you, but listen to me. Listen to me. I've been here all day. I have done my schedule to be with you. I have done my entire schedule for the whole day to be with you today. Hear me out. He wrote to Timothy, I accept you share in suffering this grace for the sake of the good news. God will give you strength for us since he delivered us and called us to a life of holiness. As his people, it was not because of our deeds, no, it was not, but because of his own purpose and the grace which he gave to us who are united with Messiah Yeshua. I urge you, I urge you, students, everybody listening, even those on live stream, don't delay. Come to the real resurrected Christ afresh now. Confess your sins, repent, and experience now the Heavenly Father's forgiveness with a new and awakened fatality and hope. Serve Him. Serve Him according to the purpose He designed for you. He wants to cleanse you, Amen. to heal you and to activate within you the power of his Holy Spirit now who did not come to rent your house. He came to own your house. Hallelujah. So that you, so that you, so that you can say like the Apostle Paul, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Amen. I'll be here after that the Reichen comes. My team will be here to pray with you, to talk to you, to listen to you, to cry with you, to weep with you, because I know that many of you are hurting. We will be here. Thank you. Come to Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.